Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode 555. Our most frequent questions about uterine bleeding while on estradiol pellets. BioBalance Health features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating the symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin and Brett Newcomb are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, a book that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. I'm Dr. Kathy Maupin. I'm the president and creator of BioBalance Health. Today we're going to talk about postmenopausal bleeding when our patients are on estrogen pellets. So that's, that's the biggest question we get from our patients is they've had their estrogen pellets and now they're having some uterine bleeding. It's a sticky question. It's complicated. And I'm going to go over the different circumstances and also the different ways to treat this so that it doesn't keep happening. First, let me say that the easiest people to treat with estrogen in postmenopause are people who have had a hysterectomy and can't bleed. Because if you don't have a uterus, I don't care if you have ovaries or not, but if you don't have a uterus, you're not going to have postmenopausal bleeding because that is what it bleeds in, in postmenopause. So if you've had a hysterectomy, then none of this really applies. Also, if you have not had a hysterectomy and you are a biobalanced patient, we will always put you on um, progesterone of some kind and natural progesterone. We never use Provera, Agestin, one of the progestins. They, progestins do not equal progesterone. Progesterone is what you made in your body every month from the day 14 through 28, and that stabilized the lining of your uterus so that at the end of 28 days, both your estrogen and your progesterone would drop, and that would cause you to bleed. So as long as you had estrogen and progesterone, you didn't bleed. So that's an important thing to think about. So one of the questions that I get at my first visit with patients is, why do I have to take progesterone every night? Now, that's a great question, but it's true. You do have to take progesterone every night. You take it at night because progesterone is a relaxation hormone. We don't put it in pellets because we don't want you relaxed 24-7. So we give it to you at night to help. It helps you sleep helps you stay asleep, and it actually has higher blood levels at night while you're sleeping so that when you wake up, you're not tired. So that's important to know why we don't put it in the pellets and why you have to take it orally. So that's the first thing, but the reason we do it is because we don't want your uterus to build up a thick lining. So if you remember that estrogen thickens the lining of the uterus, progesterone compacts it and makes it thinner, then you'll realize why we give you progesterone. We want the lining of the uterus to be thin and compact and not bleed. That's also the reason we don't do cyclic progestin while you're on the pellets because we don't want you to bleed. If you take it for 21 days and go off for five or six, you'll bleed during that five or six. Some, I mean, it may be light, but you'll still have some bleeding. So that's important to know. Um, when you're trying to answer the question or you're asking the doctor why you have to take progesterone, you have to take it every night. You can't skip any nights because if you skip one night, you might spot. If you skip two nights, you might, con you might really bleed from the uterus because that's the signal your body gives uh, your uterus to start bleeding is when both hormones drop. So estrogen doesn't hold it back. The progesterone dropping is enough. So we give progesterone so you won't bleed, so you won't have a thick lining, so we also give it to prevent uterine cancer or call, called endometrial cancer. So that's why you take progesterone and, it's, and we use natural progesterone because it's safe 
and the progestins are not safe. That's simple. Um, next question always is, what do I do if I start bleeding during the first four months of my pellets? So you come in, we have you get an ultrasound to make sure your uterus is clear and that you don't have a big thick lining or polyps or a fibroid to begin with. Then we give you pellets, which the estradiol takes about three weeks to come up to speed and the, and the testosterone uh, also takes three weeks. So for the first three weeks, generally there's no bleeding. And as you get to peak and you stay there for uh, the next three months, your uterus is exposed to estrogen and you are taking your progesterone. Your body's not quite used to it during the first four months, and oftentimes you're not used to taking the progesterone. You might miss a night or, or you didn't get your prescription in time. So there's a little variability on your, your ability to stay on track, and there's, your body has a little trouble adjusting. So oftentimes we'll have some patients who spot during the first four months. And that is not a danger sign. We've already looked at your ultrasound and it's normal if we're giving you estrogen and we didn't send you back to your gynecologist. So taking the in the first four months, if you have spotting, we just ignore it. It's not a big deal. By the second month after your, uh, excuse me, the second in insertion, that should have gone away and does not recur. So that's what happens with most of our patients. So the answer to what do I do in the first four months if I have spotting is, is basically continue your progesterone and just, just wear, wear a pad or something or use a tampon and ignore it for that because you know it's going to end. But what if after that first four months, at any time, that, any time after that, if you're starting to bleed, spot or bleed after that? Well, sometimes spotting and bleeding occur because you don't have enough clotting, um, clotting factors or your clotting or your um, vitamin K is low. So we give you vitamin K, 100 mi micrograms. You can get it at the health food store. It's inexpensive. And depending on how heavy you're bleeding, we tell you to continue taking your progesterone but add vitamin K, 100 micrograms, one to three tablets every day. That usually will correct any kind of lack of vitamin K, which is necessary for stopping bleeding. Uh, that will correct it within the, a week or two. So we want you to try it for two weeks. If that doesn't correct it, we keep you on that. We keep you on your progesterone, and we add airborne. Now, I'm not sure exactly what's in airborne that causes you to stop bleeding, but it does. So it may be the vitamin C, it may be some, some of the other, um, con, uh, the other um, vitamins and minerals that they have in there, yet it does work. So we try that for two weeks. After that, um, we double your progesterone. If doubling the progesterone doesn't do it, then we send you for an ultrasound and to your gynecologist because there's something else going on. Now, what is that that could be going on? Well, we could have not been able to see, you know, this could be any time in the time you take pellets. So it could happen three years after you had an ultrasound. So you may have developed a fibroid. You may have developed a polyp, which is like a little punching bag that hangs down inside the cavity of the, of the uterus, and, and it drips and bleeds, and it doesn't stop bleeding with progesterone. So sometimes it actually has to be removed and sent to pathology to make sure it's, it's not precancerous, although I haven't really had a precancerous one ever in my whole career, but that doesn't mean it can't happen. Um, so, so sometimes you need a DNC or a polypectomy or um, even cleaning out the uterus and then an ablation. An ablation is um, done different ways, but the end point is it, the lining of the uterus can be burnt out so that you don't bleed anymore. In the end, about 80% of the people that get an ablation never bleed again, and the other 20% bleed lighter, but they might bleed a little. So you have to know what your chances of success are before you decide to have that procedure. But it's a great procedure. And if you have it before menopause and you've never bled while you had normal um, hormones, premenopausal hormones, then you probably won't bleed when you take estrogen from the pellets. So that's always a good sign. That's kind of a little trick we have. So 
basically the series is take vitamin, add vitamin K to your progesterone and then add airborne and then double your progesterone dose and then to your gynecologist for an ultrasound and an evaluation of your uh, uterine bleeding. We um, refer our patients back to their gynecologist. We no longer do gynecology. We don't do surgery. We don't do procedures. We don't put in IUDs uh, because that's their job. And we do the hormonal management up into a point where we need to, to have you see your gynecologist. And that's their thing, so they will do that and we'll take care of your hormones. Um, another question is, um, what should I do if I forget my progesterone? So progesterone, as we said, should be taken at night. But if you realize the next morning that you forgot it, you should take it because that will keep you from bleeding. If you do it within 12 hours, when you wake up, you go, oh, I forgot my progesterone. Then usually if you take your progesterone that morning, you may be a little bit more chilled out, but, uh, but it should keep you from bleeding at all. Now, if you forget two days, it's kind of like birth control pills. If you forget two days, for birth control pills, it has a bigger implication. Two days off birth control pills can make you more likely to um, ovulate and get pregnant. That's not the case because nobody can get pregnant after menopause. So our patients, the risk is that if you miss two nights of progesterone, then you're likely to bleed the rest of the time. So we, if you've missed two, then take two. And then if you don't bleed, just keep taking one a night. If you do bleed, then you can double up the progesterone for the rest of the four months that you have left until you come and see us for your pellets. So that's the answer to what do I do if I forget my progesterone. Let's talk about the types of progesterone we use. Um, we've tried every type of natural progesterone because natural progesterone is the safest, it has the fewest side effects, and, um, and it does not increase your risk of heart disease or cancer, in fact, it lowers it. So it's the ideal way to balance your estrogen, but you do have to take progesterone. So the one FDA-approved progesterone is called uh, Prometrium. Prometrium comes in 100 milligram and 200 milligram, and usually we use 200 milligram to balance the estrogen we give you. That is taken every night, just, just as we said, and it's oral. The problem with that is there's a percentage of people who are going to get hungry on it. And most of my patients are trying to get their bodies back. And that's not a good thing, to be hungry when you wake up and or hungry all day from taking your progesterone is not a good option. Other people um, swell from it. Um, it actually becomes more estrogen, and then they start bleeding because the prometrium has become estrogen or estrone, and it's made the problem worse. It's made the lining thicker. So that's not a good option either. So if we find that that's the case, we have to use a, a different kind of compounded progesterone, and we use the best one that we found, which is called BLA progesterone, and it's from a pharmacy in Colorado, so we have to have it sent to our patients, and it works the best. It has a coating on it so that you can take it orally. It's the only other oral form that actually works and doesn't have, and it has very few side effects, but it's absorbed in the small intestine, uh, at the end of the small intestine, it goes directly into your lymph system. So it doesn't go through um, the liver initially and, and it's not broken down into estrogen. So that's ideal for what we're doing. We don't wanna give you more estrogen than we've already given you. And we don't wanna have it be unpredictable, which is what we get by uh, progesterone converting into estrogens. And we also don't want estrone. Estrone's the bad estrogen. We want you to just get your estradiol, and that makes you feel better. Estrone makes you feel worse. So the ideal form is BLA progesterone. There are other forms, and one is sublingual. You take a, it's a little tiny tablet of progesterone. You put it under your tongue. It dissolves rather quickly before you go to bed, and then you've got your progesterone for the next day. That works well in some people. Some people don't absorb very well through under their tongue, and so then they bleed. So then we have to switch back to BLA progesterone. There is a type called buccal progesterone, which you put in your cheek. 
It's like a lozenge. You have to wait for it to dissolve. The side effect of that is it can cause cavities because there's sugar in the lozenge to make it palatable. So that doesn't always work. Usually we get a pretty good blood level, but then we have issues as to your teeth and sugars. Most of us are on low sugar diets, so that's not good either. Um, there's progesterone suppositories, which we used to use a long time ago. They were literally big, white, um, but soft, kind of pliable suppositories. You'd have to put those in the rectum, and you would absorb from there. Now, those work fine, but nobody wants to do that, and I don't blame, I don't blame you. I mean, we used to use it for, uh, for PMS when we had no other treatment for PMS. We didn't have these other forms way back in the 80s, but it really worked well for PMS, <laughs> and it worked well to stop bleeding. So that's another option, but not one we use. Uh, the last form of progesterone that, that are, is really gets a high enough blood level for you to use it for to um, uh, balance estrogen and, and prevent bleeding, is the uh, vaginal suppository or vaginal tablets. And they go into the vagina just after, after intercourse, if you've already had intercourse at night, or uh, just before bed. So they dissolve and they go directly into your bloodstream. In general, that's a pretty good way to take progesterone. Uh, but it doesn't always last all day, and you might get some spotting before you, during that, that cycle of a day before you take your next progesterone. Uh, sometimes we have to dose it twice a day, which makes it double expensive, and insurance doesn't pay for compounded progesterone, which is a shame. I mean, most don't. So I'm just, I'm speaking from the Midwest. I guess there's rules that are different elsewhere. Um, so... That's the other form. The last form is um, topical. You use a cream on your arms. That's really not enough blood level to keep you from bleeding. And we find that it's, it ends up being negligible when we test for blood levels. So we tend not to do that. It's like doing nothing, basically. It's, it's like not taking any progesterone. So we don't want that for you. We don't want to build up a thick lining because... A thick lining ends up at some point getting so thick that it just gushes. That's not good for any of our patients. When you're done having periods, you don't want to have another period. So we, that's not a, we find that unacceptable, so we try not to um, allow our patients to use transdermal because it just isn't enough progesterone to keep you safe. Um, So some of our patients ask this question. I patient says, I bled over, uh, over and over during my treatment, and I bleed when I take my progesterone, not when I come off of my progesterone. I'll admit I have no clue what is happening metabolically there that would cause that, except I suspect your progesterone is converting to estrogen and not progesterone, and it is not it is making the problem worse and not better, but it has to do with you metabolically. It's not the progesterone itself. It's how your body uses it. And I believe those patients we have to handle differently. If every time you take progesterone, you bleed, that's unacceptable. Um, we're trying to make your life easier, not harder. So, so what we do is we offer you a Mirena IUD, which we don't put in. We ask your, your doctor to put it in. It has a little progesterone package on it, and <clears throat> it works directly on the uterine lining and thins the lining directly. So the IUD lives, is put into the uterine cavity, and so the lining's right around it like that. And so that progesterone doesn't get into the whole body. It doesn't go in, into your liver until you're done with it, but in general, you're done with it after it is secreted and goes to the lining itself and keeps the lining thin. That's ideal. That would be my first choice of what to do if somebody had bleeding when they took their progesterone and not when they stopped their progesterone. Another choice would be to have an ablation. That's a procedure. It's under anesthesia. I'm not sure that uh, that's ideal either. A third thing that you could do would be to not pre take progesterone at all, allow your estrogen to thicken the lining, and every year go to your gynecologist 
have an ultrasound, have a biopsy of the lining, and if the ultrasound sees no lining, then, then you're fine, your dose is perfect of estrogen, and you haven't built up a lining. That's possible, but not common. Um, if you, um, I mean, that's pretty much it in terms of your options if you can't take oral progesterone at bedtime or if you are, are bleeding because you take it. Um, we always get an ultrasound first because we have to find out if you have fibroids, uh, a polyp, if your uterus has grown, if there's any other issues that, that have happened in the interim between your first ultrasound and the time that you have bleeding. So those are the questions and the answers that we give patients who call us after their pellets and they have some bleeding in all various uh, different circumstances and in uh, and who have been taking different kinds of progesterone, uh, you have our treatment plan. So now you know what to expect. I hope that this helped you, especially if you're taking any kind of estrogen or if you're taking estrogen pellets. Uh, obviously, if you've had a hysterectomy, just thank God you've had one and you don't have to deal with this. Uh, this is this is the biggest thing, and this is not a bad thing. It's the biggest thing we deal with. So I hope there's more knowledge in your knowledge bank and that you will subscribe to us and listen to us every week and get more medical knowledge and more guide uh, or guidance on what you should do um, gynecologically, or we talk about men often as well, and we help with their hormones and also their prostates and other issues that um, come into play as we get older. So please join us next week, and uh, please subscribe, and we, we'll be glad to see you again. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.